I'm Michael Burley, and uh, as you all know, I normally attend the 1115 service with my wife, Anne. And I'm sure that, uh, as you're attending, and uh, or you've watched online at the 1115 service, you might be wondering why it is that when the offering is announced, there's a spontaneous applause from the congregation and cheering. Well, let me explain. Uh, one of our resting deacons, Charles Caldwell, went, to, went on a trip to the USA with a friend of his to visit Bethel Church in California. And uh, in the middle of the service, the whole church burst into spontaneous applause and cheering. And Charles was a little bit bewildered, and Matt turned to him and said, hurry up, quick, get out your wallet and put everything into the offering. He said, what, everything? He said, look around you. And the whole church was shouting and clapping and praising God as the offering plates were passed around. And this was their reaction to the invitation to participate in that moment of giving, the offering that day. And they were celebrating the moment in gratitude, joyful, if not hilarious, giving. And I remember Charles telling us this story here at Union, uh, I can't remember if it's 12 months or two years ago, and Anne and I were both struck, so struck by that, by that celebration of joyful, if not hilarious giving, that we've continued to do that here in Union at the 11.15 service. Now, I'm not quite sure how that might be looked upon here for the 8.45 or the 9.45. They don't know what they're missing out on, but I let them know earlier today. And I've reflected on just how my attitude uh, to my own giving has changed since I first attended an Alpha course in London at Holy Trinity Brompton some 20 years ago and gave my, on that Alpha course gave my life to Christ. And it was at um, Holy Trinity Brompton, HTB, that I was first introduced to the concept of tithing. But it wasn't really tithing in the Old Testament sense. Um, the way that Sandy Miller, the vicar then, explained it was that uh, in the Old Testament, members of the Jewish community were required to give 10% or of their produce or their income. And that was the law. And Sandy explained that when we come to know Jesus, we're set free from the law. So we're not restricted to 10%. And there was I trying to get my head around 10%. Now, was that 10% of my gross, 10% of the net? Uh, was it after tax, was it before tax? Um, and anyway, how could I possibly afford to give that much? Because I certainly wasn't giving anything like that previously. But we give out of what gives us, out of you know, what God gives us, out of gratitude. Um, and that wasn't something I'd really grasped until I didn't really, I didn't have anything coming in to give out of. Um, some of you may know that I went through a divorce and during that period uh, I decided to set up a new business uh, so income wasn't exactly something I had at that stage in my life. Um, and it was then that I really started to appreciate um, the story of the widow who gave her might, who gave everything she had in belief in the steadfast belief that the Lord would provide. So in those, uh, what for me were testing times, I still made it a priority to continue giving and to continue to support Alpha and my church. And then I was fortunate enough to be offered a job back here in Hong Kong. And I was mindful, very mindful, of the way that that particular thing happened, that, that unfolded. And it was actually God, uh, he was in the process. And he was bringing me back to a place where I'd enjoyed success in the past. And I'd lived in Hong Kong previously. He was also good enough to bring me here to Union Church. Uh, Stephen Hannah Miller, who I'd met through Alpha, worshipped here. So I came to Union. And as this new time in my life unfolded, I kept hearing at the back of my mind that Bible verse, um, Proverbs 3, 9. Honor the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruits of your crops. So at the end of my first month here in Hong Kong, I wanted to make sure I did 
just that. And in fact, it was coincidental that David Gotts from ICC was talking that Sunday. Uh, and there's a family connection with David and with his uh, work in China. And I was able to honor that and make a contribution to his work and the, the work of ICC. And it came as a big surprise for him and a joy for me. And I also at that time set up a monthly standing order to Union Church. But the great thing was it was a, it was a real joy to have something to give out of. In my old life, uh, I thought I did the work. I thought I made things happen. But I come to realize that um, God's role in my life included my business. Um, and come to that, everything else. And now that I really experience firsthand God's grace and his generosity, and I was therefore able really gladly, joyfully to give out of that. And my attitude to money and what was mine had changed. Um, God had restored me. Um, he'd uh, been able to give me something where I was able to look after my family, look after school fees, etc. And I was just so grateful to have that job. And um, that debate I used to have about whether it, little, how much, how little, whether it was gross, whether it was net, that just disappeared because I was very aware of what God was doing and what all, he'd already done in my life. And just to add a footnote, as you know in Hong Kong, when you start working here, you don't immediately get a tax bill. You, you pay tax, you get a tax notice at the end of the year, and you get taxed on the year you've just had, and you also make a contribution, quite a big one, to the tax year that's coming. So I got a pretty big tax bill. Um, so I wrote out a check, check. I hadn't quite worked out how the banking system worked, um, and I went to pay at the post office. And I literally skipped into that post office because I was so thankful that I had an income that required me to pay tax. And there was another bonus that uh, I got a tax deduction for the amounts that I was giving, um, both to the church and charities, which was helpful. And one of the things I do give thanks for is just how generous a ch as a church we are. Uh, Union started as a missional church 177 years ago, uh, and we continue that legacy. And I'm amazed by the level of giving and involvement in our church, uh, how we give as a church, not just money, but time, involvement, and care. And as you know, we recently successfully completed the Grace of Giving campaign. Thank you so much. But we had great fun doing it. We had the union reunion. We had the Grace of Giving campaign. Uh, sorry, the Grace, sorry, beg your pardon, the Grace race. Uh, and there were donations, um, the donations from the Filipino Fellowship. They were the first to give. Um, the donations from the youth, the donations from the Sunday school families, and most, you know, the, also all the individual donations that came in. And to raise that amount of money in that amount of time was, well, God inspired, it's God given. And I know that God was uh, honoring the commitment that we'd all made. And it wasn't just about money. Uh, as the Grace of, of Giving uh, Committee found out, uh, when we were praying and studying, it was about creating authentic relationships with each other, with our church, and with God. I'm also aware that, well, here, uh, here we are, almost at the end of November, and we've had the ICM banquet, we've had the ICC banquet, we've had the Faith Comes by Hearing banquet, and there are other charities uh, that you support or are involved with. So from a giving perspective, it's been a very full-on time. And I've seen so many of you at these uh, various events. And I was incredibly touched. Um, but what we're doing in this stewardship month is about the ongoing day-to-day -day work of Union Church and supporting that. One of the things about HTB in London uh, although it's part of uh, the Anglican Church, uh, Sandy Miller would say, we have a budget for the next 12 months, 
And it's going to be your contributions and God's help that will help us reach that budget. And every penny that we collect from you goes towards the work that we've outlined for the coming year. And at that time, they were also, HTB was also supporting, um, paying for the work of Alpha Worldwide. So when I came to Union Church, I was able to understand that uh, as a standalone church, Union Church needed to fund itself and needed to fund the work of our church. And I am so excited and happy to be part of that work here at Union, um, the, the work that we're involved in today. The care and education, the vibrant ministries, the outreaches, the special connections that we have with organizations here in Hong Kong and abroad. And all of that comes out of the gen generous contributions that you, our congregation, are making. So in the coming year, uh, it is each of our donations and giving that will keep the lights on, that keep people employed, that keep us with these facilities, that fund the outreaches and ministries that we're currently involved with. And as we pray, also fund the developments that the Lord is leading us into. And he is. I think our... Uh, text for today uh, bears uh, repetition. 2 Corinthians uh, 9 verse 7 say, says, each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. So I'm asking you to prayerfully consider what your offering might be for this coming year. Uh, which incidentally will be the last full year that we spend here in Wan Chai before we move back to 22A. Anne and I give something every month uh, by standing order, and if you aren't already doing so, um, could I ask you to consider giving on an annual basis by monthly standing order? Um, this helps the church immensely. It, uh, it helps with the budgeting and planning and also with administration. And I would also like to just say thank you. Thank you so much for playing your part in our wonderful union community. We love it here. Uh, you have become more than friends. You are family to Anne and me. Oh, and one last thing. When it's time for the offering, raise a cheer. <laughs> thank you. <laughs>